Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another GearWire screencast. I'm Rob, and we are going to check out Reaper yet again. This time, we're going to be looking at the Windows Digital Audio Workstation's plug-in environment. This is an environment that's highly customizable. Uh, you are used, I'm sure, uh, you, if you are a user of DAWs, uh, Digital Audio Workstations, you are used to uh, running VST or uh, DX plugins. Uh, and Reaper is no exception. It does this, but it does a lot more, and it also gives you a much finer degree of control over how these plugins are run, how they appear, how you use them, uh, and how you interact with them. So let's take a look at where these settings are. Specifically, we're going to open up the Preferences window, and we're going to take a look at the section for plugins. Now you'll notice that there are some specific um, sections, but the general section here uh, contains settings for automatically resizing the configuration windows where you can even make you can make them larger or smaller depending on what their original size is you can set the foreground to floating windows if it's selected this is uh, a fix for the kind of cluttered um, difficult to grab a handle for the VST uh, window problem that uh, you encounter a lot with other DAWs uh, you can auto float or auto dock uh, chain windows, that is to say where you define actual FX chains, uh, they have their own window and you can float them or dock them. The only allow one FX chain window open at a time, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it has some sub, uh, uh, has some sub uh, options here where you can open that uh, effects window on a track selection change. So in other words, uh, it can make the DAW a little more responsive if you select a different track, up comes its chain uh, window. Reduce denormalization from plugins. They notice that they say that is recommended. Basically, denormalization is an artifact of uh, audio processing and in the plugin world, denormalization is how a lot of, um, well, denormalization might be thought of as an abusive processing uh, uh, approach to uh, digital audio, uh, but it does uh, result in some kind of uh, glorious, messy results. Um, Reaper uh, can be told to specifically reduce this denormalization um, because of uh, what, uh, in, if you find if you find that you're in a situation that uh, is, there's a problem created by excessive and continual denormalization uh, that you can hear, either hear or uh, see uh, through uh, analysis, then uh, Reaper does give you this switch to address that problem. It also has rewire mixer support, so it can act as a rewire mixer. It can show rewire devices in the plugin browser. And uh, you can auto open these panels. You can also run effects on uh, stop. You can run effects on, this, on uh, stop when the rewire devices are active. So this is important for situations where you have a delay, for example, and or perhaps Reaper is just one source in a um, Reaper is one source in a uh, in an entire um, performance uh, matrix. Um, the effects don't necessarily have to stop when Reaper stops, and that can be important for certain effects or certain moments in your production. You can also have a check for uh, the rewire device on startup and automatically enter slave mode if it's present. So, in other words, Reaper can act as a uh, master or a slave uh, for rewire. Well, that is our basic plug-in environment. Check back at GearWire.com in the future for more Reaper educational uh, tutorial videos. My name is Rob, and thanks for keeping it on GearWire.